In fact, we have come to the last night of Jesus' life before crucifixion. So we will be looking at Matthew chapter 26, verse 30. Verse 30 to 46. Verse 30 to 46. Matthew chapter 26, verse 30 says this, And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to Mount Olive. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, this very night, before the rooster cross, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Verse 36. Then Jesus went with them to a place called the Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for a second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink, unless I drink it, your will be done. Verse 43, Then again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciple and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. May the Lord bless his own words. This passage, we just read, record two stories. Two stories of the last evening of Jesus' life before his arrest and crucifixion. Especially the second story about Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Why do I put two stories together? Because when you put two stories together, when you compare and contrast the two stories, the theme will stand out even clearer. Can you find any similarity between the two stories? Look carefully. You will find both stories talk about how to face trials and temptation. When the disciples were told that their Lord, their Rabbi, their Master will be killed, will be arrested, will be crucified. This is supposed to be the end of their life, meaning they've given up all their careers, they've given up all their families, they give up all their possessions, they follow Jesus Christ for three years and come to the end, Jesus Christ be, will be arrested and killed. So what does, what does it mean? So all their dreams and all their aspirations are gone because this is, the, this is the moment, this is the last moment. If this thing happened, all the things that they have done, all the sacrifice they have made, is all go to waste. So they are facing the most critical moment of their life. And when Jesus tells them that trials and temptation will come their way, they will fall away. Because this, they will fall away. Of course, Peter being rash and proud, 
say that though they all fall away, I will never fall away. Jesus answered him, before the rooster crows tonight, you will deny me three times. So you can see that both stories, you will see that the disciples facing a critical moment of their lives. Jesus also facing a critical moment of their life because Jesus will be facing the arrest and crucifixion at that very night. And then when you look at their reaction, their reaction is so much different. Peter and the disciples are so assured that they will not fall away. But when Jesus faced with the situation, she, he immediately go to prayer. He immediately go into humbling himself, seeking the, the will of God, and he prostrate before God and ask for help. So, of course, you also realize that Peter denied Jesus, time, Jesus three times as predicted. But Jesus Christ prayed three times, asking for help. Of course, we cannot undermine the importance of this text as Jesus prayed in Gethsemane. In fact, this is the lowest point in Jesus' life before crucifixion. Have you experienced the lowest point in your life? Can you recall, can you remember how you feel? Have you been to the lowest and lowest point when you feel you have no help? When everything seems to collapse in front of you? Do you remember how you handled this? And this is the very night that Jesus is facing when he's thinking through, meditating through, by tonight, midnight, he will be arrested and he will be trialed and he will be tortured and he will be crucified. He will be nailed on the cross and he will feel all the pain and he, uh, all the, the sin of the world will come upon him. Can you meditate and think a moment through what Jesus will be going through in his mind? You know, sometimes death is not scary, but the thinking of the coming of death or suffering just before it, it makes you tremble. In fact, I do experience a number of times the lowest point in my life. And I will confess to you right now, I am now experiencing the lowest point of my life in ministry. As you've been with us for some time, you know that if you're observant, you know that there are waves of exodus, people exceeding the church. And one after the other, for various reasons, they don't like each other, they have some doctrine issue, they have other things, and they all come like waves, one after another. So much so that I have to even question my calling, I even question my ministry, I even question my identity. My, ex my life and my ministry, I have given up everything to follow Jesus Christ and follow the calling and come to this point of life when people are exiting, then I start to question why, what happened, what did I do wrong? And not only that, my family also had problems. Well, both my parents have gone to emergency in the hospital for multiple times and they have close shave with death and they now have dementia and they are, we can see that life is slowly slipping away between the fingers. Now you start thinking, what will this life? So as you experience this low point of life, maybe you can tell, maybe you cannot tell. This sermon is for me. As much as for you. So although many of you see that I'm a very strong man, but if you look carefully, you probably can see my weaknesses. So today, I come forward and be clear with you. Yes, we see that Jesus Christ experienced this lowest point in, their life, in his life. And we all experience. In fact, I will say to you, this COVID brought a lot of issues into our life. We see marriages break up. We see couples break up. We see people in our midst 
who love the company, work for 20, 30, 40 years, and then the company betray them and basically ask them to leave without, without payment. Our lives really upside down. And then we have issue like, of course, um, Uncle Robert been to hospital, close shave, we, we, we thought what happened and, and a lot of these issues. Things are happening here. How do we handle all these things? How do we handle the lowest point in our life? How do we overcome this? So as I mentioned to you, this text is for you as much as for me. So let's look into this text. This text, I will give you the outline here. The two, two, two outlines that I come up with is this. The first story is about the denial of Savior by Peter. or In fact, actually, it should be by the disciples. And the second is the, the, the denial of self. Jesus Christ denied himself and obey God. The denial of self by Christ himself. So you compare two situations. One, both are facing the trial of their life and both group. One, assertive and say they can overcome by themselves, but Jesus Christ prefer he humble himself and honor God and obey God. And how did he do that? That's what we want to study in this text. So let us look at verse 30. When they have sung a hymns, that's what we last week we talked about this. After the, the, the prediction of uh, uh, the precursor and all the things that come, and then he, he went out. This is the last night. In fact, this is probably the um, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Probably they were went out to Mount Olive. And then verse 31, Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me tonight, this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the, she the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But this is not everything. This is not the end. But after... I am raised up, I will go before you into Galilee. And the word here, strike, the shepherd, basically Jesus predicted what will happen tonight. It's just in one, two hours time. Very likely one hour plus time. Because Jesus said, can't you be pray with me for just one hour? So very likely Jesus prayed for one hour. And after one hour, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the Judah came with all the Roman soldiers. So in one hour's time, the shepherd will be struck down and the sheep will scatter. And this is really uh, <clears throat> a quotation from Zechariah chapter 13, verse 7. <clears throat> so it, the, the shepherd is, of course, referring to Jesus Christ. In fact, this is referring to Jesus Christ. This is a... Jesus has been telling them about his, his arrest and his death and his crucifixion. In fact, last week, we remember we talked about this is the fourth time. In fact, if we go as far as, as uh, chapter 26, uh, verse 1, you will already see that. He talked about, he said that, you know that after two days' time, at, 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 when, when he, at the Passover is coming, he said the son will be delivered up to be crucified. So it's not news. In fact, he's been telling them many times, so they know, but they never sink in. But they never sink in. So we'll see that the first point is the denial of Savior by Peter or the three, uh, the, the 11 disciples. So the first point, the sub point is the prediction of their denial where Jesus said, tonight, I, <clears throat> I will be arrested. I will be uh, the, the, the shepherd will be striked and then the, 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 all of you will deny me. <clears throat> and of course, Peter immediately responds. Peter's <laughs> response is very prideful. He's very proud. He prideful denial of their weaknesses. He said, no such thing. Verse 33 said that though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. He said, look, Peter suddenly come out and said, no, everybody will fall away, but I'm not me. Don't you think he's proud? Jesus said to him, truly I say to you, this very night before the rooster cross, you will deny me three times. And Peter again said that even I must die, I will not deny you. And there's a small a sentence behind it. All the disciples say the same thing, not just Peter. Of course, all our arrow is pointing at Peter, but it's not true. Every disciple are the same. So you can see that 
with the amazing brashness and pride that the Peter denied, saying this is not possible. When you are told that you're going to face the trial of your time, of your life, what will you do? They come out asserting, no way, no such thing. They all fall away, but not me. And Jesus said, three times you will deny me. He said, no, even I die, will not de deny you. So they are so assured, so self-confident, so self-dependent. Compared to Jesus Christ, when he faced this, he immediately go into Gethsemane and he pray. So you can see there's a, such a contradiction in, in this way. So here we can see that the, the pride of, of Peter or the disciple, first thing, he, Jesus Christ tell them this will happen. It's almost like a prophecy. It's like a prediction. Peter said, no way. This is not going to happen. See, he contradicts Jesus. Second point, he basically tells Jesus, that, no, I'm better than everybody else. Everyone can, be, can, can, can fall away, but I will not fall away. So you see, he compared. How much is like us? I don't think I'm better than you. I'm better than anybody else. So you, will, you can do anything you want, but I will not do such a thing. So you see, so the first point, Peter is very prideful. The first point is that he contradicts our Lord Jesus Christ. Second point is that he, he thinks himself is better than others. And this third sub point is that he trusted himself with his own strength because he said, I will never fall away. Even if I die, I will not deny you. It's all about me. It's all about you. I will. I will not. Not possible. Doesn't it sound like us? <clears throat> but of course, all the all the uh, all the finger will be pointing at Peter for this misguided confidence, self-confidence, self-dependency. But all the disciples do the same. Jesus said to him, This very night, before Rooster Cross, you will deny me three times. Brother and sister, it's not difficult to stand firm in doctrine and theology. It is not difficult to stand to talk so eloquently about your theology, about your doctrine. But it is another thing to stand firm in the face of temptation. Is what you do. You can tell me all the beautiful language. But when it comes to temptation, come to trials, I want to see what you do. Remember Matthew 7? They say, Lord, Lord, I, I did the preaching, I did all the all the miracles, I did all the healing, but they don't follow Christ. So the point is this, you can talk all the flower, flowery language, you can talk about all the biblical knowledge, all the theology, but you cannot fight sin, you cannot stand alone, can stand for Christ, then everything will collapse. So we have to work hard. We have to, we have to work out our, our salvation in fear and trembling. And this is what Jesus Christ is doing. Compared to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ immediately go into prayer mode. He humbled himself. He sought divine help. In fact, he denied. He denied himself. He denied himself. Remember, he told his, his disciple, you, you want to follow me? You have to deny yourself, take up the cross and follow him. Peter denied that he will, he will fall away. He denied that he will be. He, he, will, he will ever have such weakness. But Jesus Christ straight away, he denied himself and go into prayer. Look at verse 36. Verse 36 says, when Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. Gethsemane is a, really a garden. In fact, we have been there. Um, we, if you've been to Israel, you, you must have visited. Uh, of course, they, they say this is a place that Jesus prayed, but nobody knows. So Jesus tell the 11 disciples, sit here while I go there and pray. So there are the 11 disciples. Judah already left uh, <clears throat> to, to talk to the Romans uh, and the, uh, the elders and the priests. 
And then verse, look at verse 37. And taking with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee. Two sons of Zebedee really is John and James. If you remember John, uh, the two sons of Zebedee is basically the one who, who, whose mother asked, approached Jesus Christ and said, Jesus, can my son sit on the left and right? This is, this is the two sons here. So Jesus took three of them, Peter, John, and James, and go to further in. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Jesus is very sorrowful and very troubled. And verse 38 says this. He said that my soul is very sorrowful, even to the point of death. Have you been sorrowful? Have you been so grieved to the point of death? Have you been such a low point, so much so that you feel like you are the only one in the world? And maybe when people reach this stage, when they don't have hope, the only thing they will do is take their lives. And when Jesus is so sorrowful, so what goes through Jesus' mind? What is he thinking about? When he says, I'm going to be arrested, of course, we are talking about the human Jesus, not talking about the divine Jesus. The divine Jesus, of course, he knows everything and he can perform miracles and he can overcome everything. But it's, it's the, his humanness, his humanity. He feels like we. He, he feels hungry. He feels upset. He, he's tired. He needs to rest. He needs to eat. And here, he needs emotional support also. He's so sorrowful to the point of death. I am so, I do not know whether you experience this. I hope you have not. But, but life is such that there are times, maybe your girlfriend left you or boyfriend, maybe the, the company did you. You've been, have you been betrayed by your best friend? Have you been, you do everything for the person that you love and they turn away and walk away. Have you experienced that? And this is what Jesus is going to experience because all the disciples will leave him and everybody will leave him. And when we, when we continue to study, even the Lord himself will leave Jesus Christ. I will tell you, in fact, you heard me say this, nobody is the loneliest, nobody can claim the title of the loneliest person in the world because what you need to do is just pray. Once you pray, the Lord will be with you. But Jesus Christ prayed, no, Lord will not be with him. He said, you have to bear the sin of the world. The Lord will not look at him and he will have to bear the sin by himself alone. And of course, what else did Jesus feel? Maybe your small group can talk about this. What did he feel when he go through this thing? And then he told the first group of disciples, the 11 say, you sit here where well, I'll go to pray. Then he take three of them, Peter, John, and James, go further. And then he told them, remain here. Look at this word, watch with me. Watch with me. Later on, I'm going to explain to this, this thing what this watch means. And going a little further, this time by himself, alone. 11, then take three, and now he's alone. He's alone praying. So he fell on his face, basically pastoral, on the, face, on, the on, on the ground, and prayed, saying, "My Father." All the scripture you see, he called God the Father. He's never called my Father, so it become very dear. He said, "My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not that I will, but as you will." Verse 40, then he came to his disciples, found them sleeping. Of course, he's praying. Then after praying, he come back to, to them, and then he saw the disciples, found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, so could you not watch with me one hour? So very likely, it cannot be dogmatic, that he has been there praying for one hour. And then verse 41, watch and pray that you might not enter into temptation. So you see, he, he's been saying, can you not watch with me? Watch with me. And then he said, watch and pray. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We always use this to, as, to give ourselves an excuse. Verse 42. And second time, he went away and prayed, my father, 
Same thing, my father. If this cannot pass, unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, when he's done, of course, this is just summary, not just that he prayed one sentence. He's, this summary of what his prayer. And then verse 43, he came, he again came and found them. They're sleeping again, for their eyes were heavy. So verse 44, so leaving them again, he went and prayed for the third time. He prayed three times and saying the same words again. Then came and then back again to them saying, sleep no more. Sleep and take your rest later. See, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinner. This is the moment. He said, rise, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. So this description very likely is near midnight. This is really 12 o'clock on Thursday night in the Passover week. Jesus already completed his ministry, already preached his last sermon, already per performed his last miracle, already celebrated his last Passover. Now he come to face to face with his last moment of his life and he come to be faced with take with the purpose of his incarnation why is he here he's here to take away the sin of the man he's here to accept the punishment of the of the people and he it is here let alone taking someone's responsibility and debt and all the things that you are going to bear. Can you imagine the whole world's sin is on him now? Not only the whole world, the, all the generation of thousand years, every people, all the Christian, all the men who confess in him, all the sin will come to him at that moment. I cannot fathom the, the weight, the gravity of that moment. I do not know how to carry this. The Bible seldom, in fact, the Bible has no record of Jesus laughing. <laughs> but the Bible did record Jesus weeping. Jesus cried when Lazarus died. And Jesus weeped over Jerusalem when he entered the city. But now, of course, Jesus knew sorrow upon sorrow. And you look at Isaiah 53, you know that this man of sorrow, and he knows grief upon grief, but no other man has ever lived such grief. But the sorrow he experienced in the Gethsemane is on the last night of his life and before his crucifixion is the accumulation of all the sorrow that man can ever know. And that night, nobody, no one can comprehend the agony that a sinless, holy God is going to take the sin and the horror, the, the filthiness of sin all at once in his body. That will hang on the cross. In fact, just now we already alluded to this, that Jesus said that He's sorrowful. He's so sorrowful even to death. And the book of Luke says this. He said that, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And he sweat. He prayed. I do not know whether you pray until you sweat like this, that he's, he, he became like great drops of blood falling from his, onto the ground. He prayed that he sweat. This is the pain. The Garden of Gethsemane is, the word Gethsemane is olive press. And that's very fitting. It is at Gethsemane, he's being crushed. He's being squashed. He's being pressured. That all, when he meditate, when he think about this, all this come upon him. And then he pray, he pray, he pray. Do you notice his prayer? Look at the content of his prayer. His first prayer, what did he say? Verse 39, he said, My father, 
if it is possible. But on the second prayer, what did he say? He said, if this is not possible. Do you notice the difference? The first time he said, if it's possible, let it pass. But the second time he said, if it's not possible, let me take it. Do you see there's a change of tone at least? So when he first come to prayer, he said, Lord, if it's possible, if it's at all possible, this is so much I cannot take. As a human Jesus, it's so much I cannot take. If it's possible, let it be passed. Can this be passed? The answer is no. If, if Jesus Christ is not going to die on the cross, no sin can be forgiven. God being righteous, God, he has to judge every single act of sin. And why did God can forgive? Because Jesus Christ take the punishment for us. That's why God can forgive. If being a righteous God, he has to punish sin, and he did punish sin because Jesus Christ took the sin. That's why he can forgive us. He said, at all, is it possible? And after praying, you know, prayer, sometimes we say prayer is um, it's like talking to God. Yeah. But I want to tell you that prayer is not chanting. It's not repeating all, the, all you want again and again and again. I would say that, I would venture to say prayer is, is come to God. You pray to God what you have, what your trouble or what trouble you, what is weighing you down. And then you search a scripture, you meditate on, and God enlightens you. Then you realize, oh, this is what God meant. This is what, he, what God's will is stated in the scripture. Then you come to conclusion, maybe we, I should do this. So prayer is not just going into, are you praying? It's okay, I'm praying. Our means I'm non-stop non non speaking for 50, 60 minutes. No. You go in, you pray, and you think, you meditate, you read the word, and then you pray to God and say, what does this mean? You meditate, you meditate, and you come to conclusion. Oh, the Lord enlightened you. Ah, now I should see why is this thing. If you not, pray again. So he first time he said, is it possible? Is it possible? Let it come past me. Then second time he go in and say, if this is not possible. Do you see the progression? Okay, if it's not possible that unless I drink it, let it be done. Then on the third time, the third time, verse 44 says, so leaving them again, he went away and prayed in the third time, saying the same word. Looks like the third, third time is no different. But I will venture to you to say that the third time means what? Because he said the same thing, but the action tell me differently. You know why? Because if you say the same thing means, oh, uh, my father, verse 42, if this cannot pass, I think he come to another conclusion. The conclusion he said, especially when he, he, verse 46 said, rise, let us be going. That means he come to a conclusion. The first time he said, if it's possible, if it's possible, let it be passed. The second time, if it's not possible, okay, I'll take it. The third time, oh, it's not possible. Rise, let's go and face it. Let's, 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 let's obey God. Because the action tell me that. So this is the, the cycle of, of Jesus' prayer. And no, make no mistake, I can understand for sure. This text, this prayer of Gethsemane, clearly nobody will question. It is talking about Jesus obeying God. If it's okay, let the cup pass. But not my will, but your will. So clear, we understand that. Jesus can we don't have to endeavor to go to, to, to on this point. Jesus clearly said, I want to obey God. I want to obey God. But even so, there is struggle, and the struggle is real. And it's so real that he needs. So in time of need, and if I if I look at this three, three prayer, I find that in Jesus' prayer, he needs strength to face this critical moment of his life. And in fact, Luke said the same thing. Luke said this. After he prayed, Luke chapter 22, verse 43 said, And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. So the Lord, God, the Father, 
did send an angel to strengthen him. I don't know. When you pray, sometimes God strengthen you. And you might not see the angel. Of course, maybe you can experience, you can share your experience. I do have some, but, but I, I don't want to, to over-exaggerate such. So he basically, this prayer tells us that Jesus Christ wants to obey God, but he struggles. He struggles. He really struggles. But at the same time, this shows us the weakness of man. Not only that, we need strength from God, but also the weakness of man. You see, Peter is exactly a good example. So over here, I will propose to you that in this denial of self by Christ, there are three points. He, he showed that he needs strength from God, as we say, we see just now. Secondly, I will say that he needs strength from his fellow brothers. He did all the brothers and sisters to come stand by him. How do I, where do I get that, 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 this idea? Before I go further, let me, let me show you that this word, in fact, when you say the, the word pray, prayer, prosigo mind, basically saying the intensified prayer, his fervent prayer, he is earnestly praying, he intensified in his prayer. Not only that, when he, remember, I keep telling you, when he asked the three, he said, watch, watch. In, in fact, verse, verse 42, he said, in the second time he went away and prayed, my father, if this cannot pass, unless it, it will be done. And again, he came then, he found that the disciples are sleeping. And then verse 44, uh, and in fact, he, he says that, he said, Can, can't you watch for one, uh, one hour with me? Can't you watch one hour with me? See, so my question is, what does watch mean? So Jesus is praying, then we sit there and say, what's going on here? We protect Jesus or what? Watch what? I will say that, look, why did he leave the, the, leave the, the, the 11 and then he takes three and then he tells the three that, watch, pray with me, watch with me. What does it mean? I will suggest to you that it means that honest, honestly, we need in our time of trial, people around me to support me, to hold me accountable, to hold me up, hold me up. I want to say this. Um, you might not know. Um, we have a bookstore in uh, Novena. And um, we, we, in fact, uh, uh, we have a sister. Um, he's not here. That's why I, I, can, I can mention I might mention his name. Uh, he lost his daughter to cancer. In very short span of time, his do her daughter is 18 years old, they're about tender age, and suddenly had this aggressive cancer and died in a very short span of time. And of course, this thing happened. I do not know how you handle this. This is low point of life. I don't know how to handle this. But thank God that Mildred is there who, who uphold this, this, this sister. He, she was in depression. She cannot get out of the house. And, and Mildred basically take her out and say, come, come to the bookstore. Help me clean the bookstore and, and, and do some cleaning for the Lord for, for, to serve. And slowly he, she walked out of the depression. It's so important that when you are so low, you need people to... To, to help you, to carry you. I heard a pastor say that one time they were praying and then he's praying with this weak brother and they would say, let me pray with you. And the weak brother really, mm -hmm. the whole weight of his body just lied on this, this brother is praying for him. You feel like you're totally gone. And I will say this thing to you. Of course, yeah, many of you do not know this, so I can be very open. Now, if you go to our bookstore, you see a lot of flowers. And then, of course, because we, we, we right now we have given, uh, we, we, I, I have given a permission to, to this, uh, another sister. And this sister, last year, her husband died in an accident. And suddenly, the old bread, the sole breadwinner lost everything that she has. And then she has, she has three daughters to raise. So they come to me and say, can I sell flour in your shop? I say, yes. You see, sometimes you need people to carry you through. When you are in hard time, you need people to support you. You need people. In fact, why, you say Jesus is a, is a divine. He, he doesn't need. No, he needs. 
He needs people to be around him, to support him, to carry him. And watch that. What does it mean? Watch like that. Are you saying that to watch me? In fact, the word watch, the watch is, is here, is basically the idea of awake, being awake, being, being awake. Grigoreo, basically being alert, being watchful, being vigilant, being ready to act. So ready to act what? Jesus Christ is praying and I'm supposed to pray with him, but I'm watching him, hoping him, watch, account, hold him accountable that he will not go wrong, encourage him and with the word of God and pray with him. This is what we do. When we are low, when we are out, we need people, especially brother and sister. In fact, Jesus took, take three of the closest person that he knows with him. And we need that. And I'm telling you, we are not asking you to provide psychology counseling because it's not not here, sweetheart, thank you, you know, you're so poor thing. No, we're here right now. If you are suffering and may, facing trial, we are hold you accountable. We are making sure that you will stay on the right course. Then we will watch out any possible things that will let you down. We will watch out for you and make sure that you will not go astray. That's what we do. And then I'm telling you, this is not fun. This is a, it's a hard work. And in fact, the tension will be that, that we will be asking you to do things that you don't like because I will be pointing out your sin and you're not happy. But of course here, Jesus, no need that anybody point, point out his sin. But of course here, he's talking about Jesus needing watch with me, pray with me, uphold me right now, just like Moses in the mountain, hold up his hand and pray, hold it up. So, when we're facing trouble, well, I, from, I see Jesus Christ, that he need God's strength for first, that nobody would dispute that. But I say that he also need brotherhood. He need brother and sister around him to hold him up and hold him accountable and support him, encourage him. So there will be encouragement, there will be rebuke, there will be discipline, there will be a lot of love. This is, I call this tough love. And if you want all the sweet talk, you can go and find a counselor and you pay, they will give you all the sweet talk. And lastly, I think Jesus left the 11, he go with the three, now he go alone. And I call this, he needs personal strength to stand firm. He needs personal strength. Why? If you don't help yourself, nobody will help you. If you are not willing to be helped, no counselor, not even any pastor, not even God, because you're, you, you want out. You even give up yourself. The Lord said, I give you a choice. You need to follow. You need to make our decision. Follow me or not. If you say no, the Lord will not force you. The Lord. Do you know that Jesus at this moment, he still can say no. Nobody forced him. Remember that uh, John, John 10 said, this is the Lord's word. He said, for this reason, the Father loved me because I laid down my life that I may take it up again. Verse 18, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it, I have authority to take it up. This is the charge that I received from my father. So did Jesus have a helpless victim? He's not. He does willingly. But it's not without struggle. The struggle is very real. But he still needs strength. He still needs strength. He had to say no. That's why I say the last step, he prayed the same prayer, but then he said, when he come back, he said, rise, let's go. Why let's go? You can say, rise, let's run. He said, rise, let's go. Because I have decided, I have to come to a conclusion, I will follow Christ. I will follow God's will. I will not give in to flesh. In fact, I, I, I originally entitled this passage, the battle between flesh and spirit. The battle between flesh and spirit. And, and when we are facing such a critical moment, we need God's strength. Please, you understand. You by yourself cannot do it. You bow down. Jesus portray and pray and pray earnestly. Earnestly. Praying, praying. And then he asked his disciple. Pray with me. Watch with me. And then he go further and he said, Lord, if really cannot pass, 
I will obey. I will obey. Not my will, but thy will. Therefore, in verse 46, he said, rise, let us, let us go. So what I'm saying to you is, when we face trial, we need God's help. We need brothers and sisters' help. And we need to stand firm. You cannot say, let go and let God, everything, let God decide. I don't want, I don't need to do anything. No, you have to discipline. There is a pain. There's a discipline that you need to exercise. Romans chapter 8 says this. So brothers, we are no debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if we live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you by the Spirit put to death, he said you must kill sin, you must murder sin, you must put him to death. The deeds of the body, who do that? Not the brothers, not people around you. You are the one. You must say, no, I will follow Christ. I will not give in. And that requires discipline. It requires you will be down, you will be out because you are so used to sin. So look, you have withdrawal syndrome. So fighting sin requires effort. Not effort, a lot of effort. In fact, you require, you, you have to do it. If you don't do it, you die. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 says, Paul said, I discipline my body and keep it under control. So you see, who, who disciplines you? If you don't discipline yourself, you don't want to exert control over yourself, nobody can control you. Paul said, I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself be disqualified. <laughs> I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, overcoming sin, you need to suffer. No pain, no gain. If you're not willing to face pain and discipline, if you're not willing to suffer, you will not overcome sin. You know, sometimes we say sin is enjoyment. I, okay, I'll pass enjoyment. But at the same time, not only passing the enjoyment, you, this sinful passion, but you also have to pay. You have to pain. You have to accept the pain. You have to accept all the, all the inconvenience. You have to accept all the struggle we come with it until you learn a new habit. It's never easy to learn a new habit. First Peter says this, Since therefore Christ suffered, in the flesh. Arm yourself with the same thinking. Whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So you want to cease from sin without suffering? Not possible. Not possible. If you are saying, no, I will willing to suffer. I will go through hard time. I will go through difficult time. I will pull through until I become Accustomed to holiness. That's called discipline. You want a simple way out, no way. And what Jesus Christ did, he go through suffering. In, how did Jesus Christ have victory? Through suffering. If you are not willing to go through suffering like Christ, you will not succeed. Yes, we are saved by faith. But Jesus Christ said, we have to go through the, 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 the sanctification. The way of sanctification means we have to sanctify our life and that requires discipline. That requires discipline. We come back to our text. Yes, Jesus Christ faced the lowest moment of his life. And he obviously had victory. And how did he have victory? He trusts God. He, he asks, he humbled himself, pray for strength. And then he asked for brothers and sisters, watch with me. And then he say that I, thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will. Unless you're willing to fight through this, you cannot overcome sin. But of course, Jesus Christ, not just doing it for himself, he do it all for us. Shall we pray? Father, as we come before you, we cannot fathom the agony that our Lord Jesus Christ go through. Father, may us open our eyes, open our hearts. Let us feel a little bit how the Lord Jesus Christ 
fell on the night at the Garden of Gethsemane. But more so that help us to imitate our Lord Jesus Christ, that we will honour our God the Father and deny ourselves, but pray the same prayer, thy will be done. So Father, we know it is hard. Our human nature will not want your will be done. But we are the blessed one that's saved by grace. Now we have to learn how to go through our life in such a discipline so that we can show the whole world it is through your power, Holy Spirit, that we can overcome sin. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.